Hi viewers, welcome to the next section of the course, Event Driven Programming. In this section, we will understand the concept of event driven programming. Then we will go through Async I.O. module in depth. Also, we will explore about debugging Async I.O. based programs, Twisted Event Driven Networking Engine, and G Event. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with event driven programming. In this video, we will look at what event driven programming is in a general sense. Event driven programs are very different from the Python applications that we have got so used to writing within the confines of the previous sections of this course. Typically, each of these prior programs follows a set flow, and while some sections of a program may be non deterministic in terms of main memory, independent RAM very much follows a deterministic approach. This diagram shows the flow in a procedural programming. We typically have an event loop that constantly listens for incoming events. Once this event loop is started, it's entirely down to the events inputted into the system that determine what is then executed and what order they have to be executed in. We will have a certain function mapped to the said key when our program receives this key press event. In this diagram, you'll see an example of the flow that an event driven program typically follows. We see it start up and then enter a wait state. This wait state goes on indefinitely until the program is shut down through either the triggering of a specific event or a system crash. During this wait state, we are constantly listening for events and then passing them off to event handlers. It should be noted that in some event driven programs, the number of events and handlers could be theoretically infinite. By leveraging an event driven paradigm for our systems, we greatly simplify our overall program structure and make it easier to increase its functionality or debug any issues in the future. The main component of any event driven Python program has to be the underlying event loop. Let's take the async IO event loop as an example. Within this event loop, we can register, execute and cancel calls. Launch subprocessors and the associated transports for communication with an external program. Delegate costly function calls to a pool of threads. A good example of this would be a simple web server. Let's say we have an endpoint on our server that serves our website, which features a multitude of different pages. Our event loop essentially listens for requests to be made and then matches each of these requests to its associated web page. Each of the requests made to our web server in the previous example would be considered a separate event. These events are then matched to a set function that we predefine whenever a said event is triggered.